Today we're on site filming an exciting new build project where we're installing 22 in-roof solar panels alongside a 32 kilowatt hour SIG energy system with full three-phase backup as well as a three-phase Zappi car charger. Now because this is a new build project, the installation is actually staged. We're fitting the solar as stage one in line with the house's roof works and then we're going to be coming back in a few months time when the electrics are ready to fit the side energy system and the car charger. So this video is sort of going to be a part one focusing on the solar and then part two will be coming a few months down the line when we've done the battery system. The solar system that we're installing today consists of 22 Viridian 445 watt solar panels. Now, unlike many other in-roof solar mounting systems, Viridian actually make their own panels to work with their mounting system. When we originally started designing for this system at the back end of last year, the largest panel that Viridian made was a 405 watt model. Since then, they've actually released a 445 watt panel that's much more modern. So as soon as that was released, we swapped all our active Viridian projects over to the 445 watt version so that all of our clients are maximizing the generation that they're getting from their in-roof solar system. So how does the installation of the Viridian in-roof solar system actually work? Well, as you can see, the roofers that have been working on this house have left the roof in a clean state. It's been felted and battened and they haven't started tiling over any of the area that we're going to be working on just yet. When the roof's at this point and it's ready for us to come in, the first thing we do is check the battening layout. Different in-roof mounting systems have different battening requirements. Some need more battens and some need less. So our roofers will check the battening and then if necessary, knock in a few more battens to ensure that the in-roof mounting system can be installed properly and correctly. Now with most in-roof systems, once you've checked the battening, you then fit a sort of tray or pod, whatever you want to call it, and the panel would then sit in the tray. You'd then install some lateral flashings, which work a bit like a gutter to make sure the water runs off the system and onto the roof tiles below or into the roof gutter instead of leaking inside the roof. With Viridian, however, they've set their system up a bit differently. Somewhat counterintuitively, you actually install the panel straight onto the bottoms of the roof. The Viridian panels are 70 millimeters thick. The top 30 millimeters or so is panel and the bottom 40 millimeters is frame to allow you to fix the panel directly to the roof. Once the panel's been fitted to the roof, you then install the flashings around the edge, which slide into the gaskets on the side of the frame of the panel. Once you've done the edge flashings for the first panel, you then install the Viridian side flashing, which sits between the panels in the array. The kit that comes with Viridian systems is a lot more complicated and bespoke than that which you get with other in-roof systems. It's customized to every project and varies depending on the layout of the solar array. If you have a rectangular array, then you're gonna need a certain number of lateral flashings and a certain number of corner flashings and a certain number of edge flashings. If you have an array with a skylight in the middle, then you also need some bespoke flashing for that. And that flashing changes depending on the size of the skylight. If you have two rows of panels, then the kit is a bit different to if you only have one row of panels and so on. Now, once the panels have been installed, we then go around the edge and install even more flashing to ensure that the roof is watertight and make sure that everything is sealed properly before the roofers return to tile around the array and finish off the roof. While solar panel systems are incredibly safe when installed correctly, there is still a slight fire risk. One potential fire risk comes from the MC4 connectors at the end of a string of panels. MC4 connectors allow DC cables to connect to each panel and then onto a central inverter. The risk comes from an electrical arc fault that can develop if there's a mistake assembling the final MC4 at the end of the string 
or if different brand connectors are mismatched through the install. We only use the original Storbly branded MC4 connectors, which are also the ones most used by solar panel manufacturers. You'll find many replicas of the MC4 connector on the market of varying quality. As they're a critical part of the system, we'll only use the best connectors on the market. If the authentic MC4 connectors are fitted properly by experienced installers, then these connections are really not something to worry about. However, I want to share with you a solution developed by Viridian that gives peace of mind and keeps your building protected against the fire risks if there are any issues. The solution is a product called ArcBox, which we fit as standard with all of our in-roof solar systems. The MC4 connection sits inside the box with the DC cables feeding in and out either side. The DC connector is suspended in free air between the cable sealing grommets at each end and there are ventilation and drainage ports at the top and bottom to keep the connector within its operating temperature limits while carrying its rated current and prevent the accumulation of moisture around the connector. When the MC4 connection's been assembled, you simply put it in the arc box, make sure the cables are sealed, and then snap the enclosure shut around the connector. If there is an electrical arc fault and a fire starts around the MC4 connection, it will simply burn inside the arc box and protect the rest of the system and the building. There are a number of advantages to using an in-roof solar mounting system when you're re-roofing or putting up a new building. The biggest advantage is that for every bit of roof space covered by in-roof solar panels, you don't need to buy roof tiles. Now, if you're using expensive tiles like this client is, then that cost saving can really add up, especially when you consider that you're also saving on labor costs because you don't need your roofers to spend so long on site fitting roof tiles. So not only are you saving on roof tiles, but you're also generating electricity and turning your roof into your own energy generating business. In-roof solar systems also have a few advantages over on-roof solar systems. The first of which is another cost saving by way of bird protection. Now standard mesh bird protection is not that expensive, but it can take time to install and that labor cost really adds up. If you go for a really premium bird system that also looks great, like solar skirt, then you're likely going to be spending upwards of a thousand pounds for bird protection on a relatively large array like this one. With in-roof solar, you don't have that cost. So you don't need to worry about the pests getting under the panels. And you also don't need to worry about spending more on a fancy bird guard to make the system look as neat as possible. It just looks great from the start. Another advantage that you have with in-roof solar is that you don't have the issue of wind uplift. For every system that Spirit Energy installs, we do a technical and structural survey that is then signed off by chartered structural engineers. We then take those measurements and plug them into the software that comes with our on-roof mounting system. That software looks at the area the house is in, the height above sea level, the snow loading and the strength of the wind in the area, and then specs the mounting system accordingly so that we never install a mounting system that is too weak and not fit for purpose. If you go in roof, you don't need to worry about that cost. Now, it wouldn't be fair for me to talk about the advantages of in-roof solar systems without also talking about the disadvantages of them, particularly with regards to the options you have when specking the system. With on-roof systems, you have a lot of choice. You can go portrait or you can go landscape. You can have jumbo panels or you can have standard size panels. You can pretty much arrange the system in whatever way you want. And if you really want to maximize the generation that you're getting from the roof space, you can even play a game of Tetris with the roof to eke out that extra bit of generation. Within roof systems, you can't do that. You can't install landscape and portrait panels in the same array because the mounting system does not have that flexibility. If you wanted to do that, you'd need to install the portrait panels in the row, then have a gap of a few tiles before installing the landscape row which isn't a very efficient use of space. 
you also don't get the same flexibility with regard to panel options. So with Viridian, they make their own panels. And the only panel they make at the moment that's really up to industry standard is the 445 watt model. Other in-roof systems do allow you to use standard panels that you can also use for on-roof systems, like the Ico Neostar 3, for example. However, you're also quite restricted with your options there. The panels have to fit within the trays that are provided, and those mounting trays are very often a year or two behind the panels. So if the industry standard for solar panels is currently around 485 watts at the time of making this video, in-roof mounting manufacturers will just have finished creating mounting systems that fit with last year's panel model. They won't have gotten around to making trays that are compatible and fire tested with newer panel models yet. In the UK, to meet building regulations, the in-roof mounting systems have to be fire tested with the solar panels. That usually takes quite a while, so the latest panels being used in on-roof systems aren't able to be used with in-roof systems just yet. Another small disadvantage to mention is that in-roof solar panels are also slightly less efficient than on-roof solar panels. This is because of the airflow or lack of airflow under the panels. Solar panels perform better at lower temperatures. On-roof systems can cool down more easily because the wind can get under the panels to carry away heat. With in-roof systems, that doesn't happen as effectively. So the panels do get a bit hotter and do perform a bit less efficiently in the summer months. Now this issue, to be honest, is really over-exaggerated and going in-roof is not going to have a huge drop-off over the course of a year. It's not worth choosing to go on-roof if you'd rather go in-roof just because of the heating issue. The panels will perform a bit worse in summer, but over the course of the year, it really won't make much of a difference. So what are the benefits that this customer will see having gone solar? Well, the 22 445 watt panel system paired up with 32 kilowatt hours of battery storage is expected to save nearly 2,500 pounds in the first year alone. The solar system is estimated to generate 9,594 kilowatt hours in the first year, 35% of which is expected to be used in the house straight away. 36% of that annual generation is expected to be stored in the battery for use later on in the house, and the remaining 29% should be exported to the grid for a profit. Now, when the house is complete, it's estimated to use about 9,500 kilowatt hours per year, and the estimated rate of return for the solar system is 11%. As that electricity usage increases and more of the solar generation is used on site, the rate of return will get better and the payback period will come down further. Now, if you request a quote from Spirit Energy, this is all information that we provide as standard, along with other modeling, such as a full cash flow table, net present value estimation, and seasonal estimates for how the system will perform throughout the year. For example, on an average summer's day, this system is expected to generate around 41 kilowatt hours. On a day in winter, it's expected to generate around 10 kilowatt hours.